Our Father, we thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for all you've granted journey mercies to our brothers and sisters from different parts of the nation. We do praise your name because of bringing us here so that we can listen to your word and be fully prepared for the task ahead of us. We pray that you'll be mightily present with us in your power and in knowledge of the truth in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that where there has been darkness, your light will shine. Amen. We pray that where there has been inward, internal corruption, not known to people around, that the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus will cleanse all the corruption away in Jesus' name. Amen. Where the feet are lame spiritually, and the hands are withered spiritually, and the eyes are blind spiritually, and the ears are deaf spiritually, and the life blood of the church has run cold in the veins, and where there has been compromise and falling and a changing of standards, Father, we pray that the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn within every heart yeah. and you will bring us back to where we ought to be in jesus name yeah. we pray that every preacher that will come up here to speak to the body to the representatives of the various churches all over this nation that your power will come upon the preachers yeah. that the fire will burn through the preachers that, Lord, everyone you will use here, those of us in Lagos and those of us from outside Lagos, all of us, O oh Lord, that your anointing will be upon us to declare your truth to all your people in Jesus' name. That strength will come back to the church. Light will come back to the church. Fire will burn in the church. And you will use your people that will be raised up as a mighty army to reach out to all the communities in this nation and bring people back to the Lord. That churches that have gone off will come back to the center. That Lord, every one of us at the end of the Congress will be able to testify that you have visited your people afresh again. We we'll pray, Lord, that all wandering hearts will be brought back to you yeah. and that Lord the whole church as a result of this leadership strategy congress will rise up on our feet again yeah. to be able to do exploits for the glory of our God teach every one of us lead us in the right direction that our hearts may sing praises to you in Jesus name we pray Stir the whole church up that all these things we have been talking about will be a reality in your own life. That God will bring us as a church back to the foundation. Talk to the Lord in prayer that all the idols in your heart of deeper life that is to make us rediscover where we started and what our lives were and what we ought to have now as a church in our lifestyle so that we can determine the ministry that God has placed upon us as a whole church as a whole ministry. And because of this, it's very, very important for us that we will pay attention to everything that is said and all that we'll be doing at this Congress so that you as an individual will not be the one that will set us back in what we're expecting the Lord will do in our midst. 
Tonight, I'll just be giving you some information and some instruction. I'm going to wait till tomorrow morning to handle the first message proper. Because there are important things that I do not want other people to miss and those who are still coming on the way who might be joining us uh, tonight and will have a fuller house tomorrow morning. There are things that we'll not want to miss in the first message. But tonight, I'll briefly give you the instruction and the information. And after that, we'll still sing, and then we'll pray, and we'll round up for the day, and those who have not eaten will eat, and then we'll get ready to have a full day tomorrow. In Genesis chapter 35, Genesis chapter 35, from verse 1. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there. And make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fledest from the face of Esau, thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. And let us arise, and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. And he gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem, and the journey. And the terror of God was upon the cities. That were round about them. And he did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. There is so much in these few verses that I've read that want us to resist the push to preach from the passage. But already I've told you that we are here for this Leadership Strategy Congress so that we can rediscover the roots of deeper life and rediscover the calling of deeper life and rediscover the purpose why God raised up deeper life and to go back to that same root, that same foundation, so that the original intention and purpose of God for us as a body will still be fulfilled. God called Jacob. Jacob was the foundation member of the race of Israel. The name Jacob was changed to Israel. And out of that name, God now raised up a whole nation, a nation of thousands and millions of people. And God had a purpose that will not terminate with the brief life of Jacob. He passed on that purpose to the life or the generations of Israel. And the nation is still there today. And God wanted to establish something which Jacob 
was about forgetting. In the lifespan of Jacob's life, because of the many things he had gone through, and through because of the prosperity that God had granted him, he was about forgetting that the thing was not to terminate with himself alone. And so for God to reestablish the purpose for which he changed his name to Israel, he told him to arise and go up. He had been down. The plain where he was was at a lower level geographically. Now he was to move up. And God is calling us, not only now me as the leader, the general's superintendent, but he's starting from me and then reminding me of the vision and calling upon me that I will remind you that we as the people of God, as a group together, and as the church, the local church together, that it is time that this church will awake and arise. And the lower level that we have got ourselves bogged down to, that will get out of that valley and go up to Bethel. And Bethel that God was talking about to, to Jacob was not something strange to him. He knew Bethel before. But you see, a lot of the people that were with him now, they didn't know Bethel. And God told him, now you know Bethel. You arise and take this whole company of people that I've given you, take them back to Bethel. And I can tell you, I know that Bethel. I know the beginning, the foundation of this deeper life. Before you ever knew the Lord, a lot of you, before you heard the message of the gospel, God dealt with me. And he showed me what Bethel spiritually ought to be. And the cardinal Christian experiences that will make a person to be like the stature, the measure, the image of Christ, be conformed unto Christ, which is God's purpose. And um, years gone by, we tasted of the goodness of the Lord and he established us. We know Bethel. But the vicissitudes of life, the activities of church work, and a lot of things we have gotten involved with has taken us to different, different places spiritually. We have known what it means to get healed, get delivered, have crusade, rejoice, have popularity, be known at Laban's house, be known in Padan Arab, be known over here, over there, we have wondered about a bit. But now God is saying, go back to where you started. And that's the reason we have called you to this Congress. You will see that we have not overloaded you with materials. You will see the paper in your hand that it's not like a big file, big papers overload you with reaching material. This Congress is not for, you know, overloading you with materials and stuffing your head with things, but it is to make us dig deep until we get water beneath the surface. And until we are able to everyone, young and old, men and women, the, Lord, the people that have been here for a long time, and those who have just come, you will discover where that Bethel is, and you will arise. 
you're not going to leave me alone to go to Bethel and say, go, we're not going. We're not going. Jacob told the people, he said, all of us must go. And I tell you the same thing. We shall arise and go back to Bethel. Now he told them that this is what the Lord had said. Then Jacob said to his household, and isn't this the household of faith? In particular, the people we call Deeper Life Bible Church. And I don't think of, I've never thought of any other name. Deeper Christian Life Ministry. Deeper Life Bible Church. Deeper Life Campus Fellowship. Deeper Life School Outreach. You never think about any other thing. Deeper Life. And it's the kind of water you drink from the wells at Bethel that you never get any other place. There's a kind of joy, a kind of intimacy with God, a kind of far-sightedness, a kind of the vision of heaven, a kind of intimate relationship with God you get at Bethel that you never get any other place. And so, he told the whole household, and he said, let us go to Bethel, the place that the Lord had spoken to him of. If you read just these verses I've read to you now, you'll see a lot of things that came as a result of the call of God unto Jacob, saying, you need to go back to Bethel. You will see confession. Who knew that in the household of Jacob that idolatry had come in? Whoever suspected. In fact, Laban ran after them and said, How about my idol that you stole? Jacob never dreamt. That there was idolatry in his household. And he boasted and said, What? Idol? You check up. Whoever you find the idol in his hand, he will die the death. And Laban tried to check up. Haven't you read the story? And he went from tent to tent. And he never got any idol. Which of our leaders in deeper life? Preachers, pastors, evangelists would ever dream of idols. But before we go back to Bethel, a lot of confessions will have to take place. They began to make confessions and they said, I have one idol here, I have another here. Apart from the confessions, they began to make restitution. The things they covered up. And you know, Jacob had even brought a curse upon the family that if there is idol discovered with anyone, the fellow will die, not knowing that there were idols there. And eventually, with confessions, restitutions, they began to draw all the idols the gods, putting away the strange gods. Do you know that transformation also came? They had to change their garments. If you study your Bible, you will know that the garment refers uh, spiritually to righteousness. What does the Bible say that we put on the New Testament? We put on Christ. We put on the garment of righteousness. And over here, they needed to change their garments. You see confession? You see restitution? You see transformation? Don't you see consecration as now they rose up and there was no body that resented or rebelled and said, we're not going? They all consecrated. And this week as we're here, there will be confessions. There will be restitution. 
there will be transformation and there will be consecration. They followed after him. And as they followed after him, we are told that Jacob even got from them their earrings. And he was talking about idols. Earrings too had become idols to them. In the early years of this deeper life, earrings were not idols to any real member. But now, worldliness is being defended in many circles. But, thank God we are here. A lot of things that had been in the household of Jacob, that Jacob never knew, never dreamt of, it came up as they were now getting prepared to go to Bethel. And how wonderful that these people, without too much strain or argument, they just brought all the earrings and I believe that as the Lord himself will be calling us to go back to Bethel to rediscover our root and to rediscover the purpose of God for deeper life. In this Congress, whatever areas of worldliness are there in our lives, I'm sure it will not take us time to get things corrected. And then they were hidden. They buried them. I'm believing and expecting that there will be things that will come up in this Congress that will be able to give up and bury forever. That it will not be that we'll just talk about them now, confess them now, Repent about them now, and then in two months' time again, we are back to our vomit. I hope it's not going to be like that. There are things that we're going to be faithful to God as individuals, as leaders, as ministers, as preachers of the gospel, and as whole churches, congregations, as men on our part, as women on our sisters' part, that we're going to honor God and we're going to come to God and say because of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross of Calvary. We're very sorry that we have allowed this and allowed this and allowed this and we're going to bury everything under the oak tree and we're never going to dig them up again in Jesus' name. And then we're going to keep on on our journey. This is just a milestone in deeper life. If Jesus tarries, this Congress is not the end of the journey. After they buried that thing, they continued their journey. Are you going to continue the journey? Oh, we have a long way to go. Look at the field ahead of us. Look at our churches waiting for us in our cities, in our villages, in our local governments, in the major towns, everywhere. And um, Look at the whole of Africa waiting for us. The, you know, Francophone countries and Anglophone countries, all these countries waiting for us. The journey is ahead of us. And we are still going to preach the gospel. And we are going to move from place to place. And as we make our journey, we'll be faster than before now in Jesus' name. And the terror of God was upon the cities. Protection. Preservation. Covering. The fire of God that just covered them. And God appeared to send his hornets before these people. And he created fears in the hearts of these enemies. And nobody could touch them or pursue the sons of Jacob. Isn't that victory? I believe that as we rediscover the roots in deeper life, I believe that a new kind of victory will come. 
new kind of protection will come to you. The journey is much. And I believe the Lord is going to help us to be faithful. And we are going to continue with the Lord. Now, as I've told you, the purpose of this Leadership Strategy Congress, uh, we'll need to do our part. If we are going to get back to Bethel, and I believe we're going to get back to Bethel. If we are going to rediscover our roots, and we're going to rediscover our roots, and we're going to get back to where deeper life used to be, and we are going to be there, we need your cooperation. And uh, this life in the camp, We've been writing it and typing it, printing it in every program. But this time, let's observe it. Are we going to observe? Let's look at it from page one. The Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that is see no unclean thing in thee. Can I appeal to you that this Congress... Let there be holiness as the watch word. In our relationship with the other, don't let there be anything of unclean language. Don't let there be any literature that is pornographic. Don't let there be any cassette that is defiling, corrupting. Don't let there be any exposure of the human anatomy of your flesh that will be tempting to anyone. You are a man, be dressed properly if you are in the public. Don't pose a temptation to other people. You are a woman, cover yourself up properly. Dress up properly so that you are not a source of temptation to people around you. And all these uh, various things that have come into the church of uh, women covering half of the head and uh, leaving the other long part of the weaved air outside for show. If you want to cover, cover. If you want to advertise, they do that in the world. Don't do that here. In this Congress, we don't want to distract anybody. We don't want to become a stumbling block to anyone. And in your dressing, all the, the kinds of dressing I see among the women now, that will have the uh, shape of V on your chest. And when people look at you, they see part of your front area that could be a temptation to the men around you. Let's go back to Bethel. We're not doing that before. And the one that has no back, that will tempt the men around you. And the dress that is so short that when you sit down, the people that maybe stand in front of you like the ushers, they would be seen into your laps. It's degrading and shameful. And it's corrupting, tempting, and defiling. Let's take care of these things. And the kinds of transparent dresses that you women put on that we can see your underwear and we can see the straps of what you put under from the back and from the front let's get rid of all those things the kind of transparent dress you wear that will know that the color of your underwear is red or is this or is that how shameful that people on the highway of holiness to Zion will be making people to fall by the wayside. Have we forgotten that we are representatives of the King of Kings? Why are we serving the devil? Why are we employed by Jesus Christ the Savior? 
How is it you are in the church and you make people to think of the world? Let's get rid of those things. If it's only one good dress you have that will cover your nakedness, that will make us to see you, that that is a real child of God, that I, your pastor here, and the foundation member of Deeper Life Bible Church, will look at you and know that I have not labored in vain all these years. If it's only one dress you have, that will make me feel happy that my labor is not in vain. All these years of teaching and teaching and teaching put on that one dress. After all, you're not looking for pleasing the people around you or people you're not wanting to show any film show to anybody. You want to please heaven. And you want me watching over you to do it with joy and not with sorrow. Because that will be unprofitable to you. And in our language, as we relate with one another, as we communicate with one another, let the language be clean. Then, endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering for bearing one another, in love. Oh, deeper life, how we used to be meek and lowly and humble. You know, in the early years of deeper life, you'll see, you never knew the graduates from the primary school teachers. Everybody is saying yes to one another. But now, let's go back to Bethel. Let's see that lowliness and humility. Let's see the respect for one another. Let's see the love and the forbearing with one another. Let's see the self-denial. And let us see that in the hostels, we respect the conveniences of one another. And as we relate with one another, let's see that humility. Let's see that meekness. Uh, you know, sometimes when you are in a large gathering like this, and we don't know who you are, what I mean is we don't know from where you are coming, and you'll find uh, a sister. Maybe you are the woman coordinator in your, you know, village where you have come from, or maybe in your district where you have come from, but we don't know that. And then you stand over there, you talk in an arrogant manner. Uh, to, you say, so and so, come over here. You have not seen me since you came to the Congress. Did you come to kneel down to say, uh, good morning, ma? And we look at you. We don't know that you are their commander-in-chief in your, in your local government. So we'll be wondering, what's wrong with that arrogant fellow? What's the matter with her? Don't portray that picture here. Let's love one another here. Have you not read your Bible? Why are we reading our forgetting? That Jesus Christ, just before he went to the cross, oh, Jesus is the very son of God. He took the bowl and he took the water. And you know what he did? He began to wash the feet of his own disciples the people that owed all their lives unto him. He knelt down. I wish you'd be leaning for the king, but the king of kings knelt down before them and they washed their feet. If it is still this same Bible we are following, I told you there will be confessions, there will be restitution, there will be transformation, there will be consecration. We need to change all these things. The arrogance that has come in. You know what we're doing in this retreat? Uh, before, in our past retreats now, we used to employ people in Lagos, and we used to pay them money. We used to pay them money to cook the food. But this time, uh, those who are put in charge of various areas, 
uh, they were thinking that they were going to employ people and they were going to pay them. And I said, no. We're going back to the beginning. We're going to do the cooking ourselves. We're not going to allow some people to come and cook for us and we're paying them. We're going to show the humility. The fact that we can still obey this Bible. You have Bible in your hand? Can you obey that Bible? That we're going to demonstrate it. And so tonight is the Lagos Brethren, women representatives and zonal leaders that served. And I told uh, Sister Biodo Kumoyi, that's my wife, go to the kitchen. You will be in charge of the kitchen. Let's let me and you let's show the example that you'll be in the kitchen and you will as you are there, you do the cooking with them, you do the things with them, and you know, run around, sweat a little. So we can instead of just giving these people the theory, let us give them the practical too. And so the Lagos people have been cooking today and uh, they do the serving and they are doing the washing. And with our zona leaders, our women representatives, you know, they have been there almost all day. We're trying to show you that this Bible is not going to become a history book. If Jesus could, you know, come down and wash the feet of the disciples, what's happening to us? We're going to go back to where we started. Tomorrow morning, Tuesday, it's Kano stage and Sokoto stage that will do the cooking and the serving and the washing of plates for tomorrow morning. Is that all right? Can we do it? For the afternoon, it is Cross River and Benue states, both of them, that will prepare the food for the afternoon. When they prepare the food, they do the serving and they do the washing. For tomorrow evening, it's on those stage that will do the cooking and the serving and the washing of plates. All those states have called now. You will wait after the meeting tonight and you will see uh, Sister Biodo, uh, even the Lagos state is uh, finishing all their cooking tonight. She's not going to finish. She's going to be in the kitchen for, you know, the whole period. You will see her and uh, she will discuss with you. And wives of state uh, overseers, um, you know, uh, please, uh, you must be there. If my wife can be there, you have no excuse. Let's go back to where we started. And all you women representatives from your states, uh, all the chair that you brought, the high chair where you have been sitting in your state, dump that chair in the latrine and come and sit on the ground. Come down with us here. And let's do like Jesus. And you will, wife, uh, wives of state overseers and wives of uh, district pastors, you will get to the kitchen. You will walk along, uh, you know, with Sister Biodo over there. And uh, that's where to prove that we're Christian. It is not, you know, when we, you know, put our bags on. I see you, you put your bag on your shoulder. You dress very nice and you never go to the kitchen again. At home, you don't even cook for your husband anymore. You know, there's me there, there's this there. That one is going to cancel. It's going to cancel. We're going, to, we're going back to the Bible. And all the denominational cobweb that is now on our Christian life, this Congress, all the cobweb is going to go away in Jesus' name. <laughs> Therefore, all those uh, states that have called for tomorrow morning, Kano and Sokoto, please, you wait behind. Uh, Cross River and Benue State, you will wait behind for afternoon. On those state for the evening, and uh, you will get the work done. And you are not just there to, you know, command people, instruct people, dribble them this way, just standing and giving commandments. Everybody, you will get involved. And uh, you'll make the arrangement, and uh, I hope you will do it well. You know, uh, I've, been, I've been crying, I don't know for how many months now. And those of you from Kaduna State, when I came to your state in 
uh, the beginning of uh, July, you will know the way I spoke to you in Kaduna City. Kaduna, are you here? Kaduna City, where are you? Can you raise up your hand? You will know that, thank you, the way I spoke to you, you will know that I've been crying for some months. And when I came to Zaria in July, you will know the way I spoke to you in Zaria that the word of God, I want to go back to the word of God, you'll know that, uh, you know, the person standing before you now has been, you know, has been drinking his tears. And uh, I don't want you to, I mean, I should stop crying. Should I cry till I die? And you know, when you was a leader, and I knew the vision God gave me at the beginning of this deeper life, the teaching, the holiness, the lifestyle, the humility, the meekness, the lowliness. You know, I, I have the picture. I know, how the, I know what the Lord showed me. I saw it those years. And I spoke about it. And we started laying the foundation. But I see things, uh, you know, going another direction. And... Uh, Number two. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. So, all the things will be laying down in the, uh, in the Congress here. Let's all agree together. And let's follow the same thing together. And walk by the same rule. Mind the same thing. Number three. Let's abide in the doctrine of Christ. All the uh, scattering and all the pulling aside and all the disagreements. I don't take that. I don't believe that. You know, the time is not long when the Lord may come. And so, let's keep to the teaching of the word of God. And number four, be thou an example of the believers as who are here. Be an example in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Let every one of us, as we interact with one another, and all the things we do here, let us walk worthy unto all pleasing. Five, let no foolishness or filthiness or foolish talking or jesting be once named among you. And uh, we ought to pray. That's number six. In this uh, Congress, let's uh, welcome the old standard back with prayer. Let's really go on our knees and let us be stirred up that by the grace of God, we are going to come back to the standard that had been laid down all these various years. Number seven, about our dressing. Let's cover our nakedness. The men will cover their nakedness. The women will cover their nakedness. And let's dress um, moderately too. Moderately too. You see how I've come before you tonight. Uh, you know, I go to the States uh, in Nigeria here a few times at least. And when I see the uh, pastors of deeper life there, even when it is very, very hot, I see them tie, suit, shoe every time. And uh, not only that, I see them changing suit after suit. And I, I look at them and I wonder. And sometimes when I call them to meetings in Lagos. Uh, I had meetings with all the states in Lagos in August, with all the district pastors. They come from, you know, their states and all suit. And it appears that, you know, the tailors are only busy for them in their state. Looks like the tailors have no other job to do now except to be, you know, dressing the men and the women of deeper lives. And I just wonder, and I think you should be wondering too, why can't we be moderate in our dressing? It is not the suit that gives the anointing. 
a lot of people have lost spiritual power. All that remains is a coat and tie. And I see some of you women too, you, are, you too, you have started putting on something like coat. I see you. Only it's, um, you know, it's not every time I can talk. Even sometimes when I want to talk, my heart is, you know, so crushed and bruised that the only thing I can do is to run away and go and hide myself in my closet and talk to God. I see some tendencies. I see some competition with the people of the world. And I see this kind of, uh, you know, high class dressing that is coming into the midst of the people. The pastors are like that. The women are like that. Let's dress moderately. That's how we know those who really love the Lord. The people who are preparing for the coming of the Lord. Don't spend all the money that we need to spend for evangelism and for the work of the Lord. Don't spend it all on dressing. And then the way you clothe your children, teach them Christian standard from their childhood. Don't spend all the money on clothing them. Let things be moderate. You know, in the uh, early, in the early life, my own early life before I became born again, there's something I used to see in the various denominational churches that made me to feel disgusted. I wasn't even born again then. The people that came to church, they came to advertise their kind of dressing. Have you seen that in denominations before? Oh, it's there. And eventually I started, I, I began hearing the gospel message and I, 1964, the 5th of April, quarter after 8 in the evening, I knelt down. And the Lord just broke my heart. And I gave my life to the Lord. I became born again. I didn't know too much that time. But I told the Lord that, Lord, the rest of my life, I will read this Bible. I will serve you. And I was in that church. And um, oh, in the early years, they taught the word in that church. Eventually, in all the camp meetings of that church, I discovered in the early years of my Christian experience in the church, whenever we were going for camp meeting, oh, we were preparing, really preparing, because we knew it will have spiritual impact later. Whenever we got to the camp meeting, it will be fashion parade. And I saw it. And um, deeper life had not even started then. And it's that time I'd been crying in that place. And I saw the general overseer of that church. He's gone now. He's dead now. He died in 1983. But I saw him. And uh, he, because uh, he knew I was a graduate, I'd been, uh, you know, I was... Even lecturing, uh, you know, I lectured later. But before I came to lecture, he had known me. He looked at the way I dressed, and he said, uh, look at this, look at how you are dressing. I said, sir, when I became a Christian, and I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The way I'm dressing now, that's what you are teaching. That you are changing the standard. And a lot of these people coming to all this, they are changing the standard. I said, sir, the women in this church, when I became born again, they were covering their head. But now what I see 
I'm surprised. And I told him, I didn't know I would leave that church or that they would drive me away, whichever. But I told him, the way I am now, I will never be. Oh, I don't know about you, but look, I became born again in 1964. This is 1990. I'm not ashamed yet of wearing sandals, of wearing my, you know, moderate shirt. I'm not ashamed of not caring about money. When you see a man who can stand on conviction for 25, 26 years, that man is going somewhere. Where are you going if you don't have conviction? If you bring all this, you see all this, uh, you know, fashion of the world, I see it amidst a lot of people in deeper life now. The thing we fought in those other denominations, and, and we fought this thing. I mean, I, I fought it. Scripture union, I fought it. Apostolic faith, I fought it. In all the places they invited me to speak and give the word of God, I fought this thing you call worldliness. The things that I almost gave my head and neck for in my own house here. Look at it. What's the matter with you people? This time, let's come back to where deeper life ought to be. And while we're here, let us demonstrate that in reality, we're willing to go back to a kind of dressing that is moderate enough that people will be able to know that is deeper life. Now we don't know the difference between assemblies of God and deeper life, between apostolic faith and deeper life between first choir and deeper life. We used to know in those days, immediately you see somebody coming, a lady coming, far at a distance, you have no doubt that's deeper life. Anywhere. Am I right? We don't know them now. Immediately you see a man in a church, before we started Sunday worship, that, uh, you know, a man will rise up and says, I want to ask a question. Immediately, the pastor there will say, are you one of those Bible study people in deeper life? They know, they knew us. Why are you changing like chameleons? Why can't you stand? Paul the Apostle said, follow me as I follow Christ. What evil have I done that you cannot follow me? Am I not an encouragement to you? Or am I going to be the only one that is keeping the standard? The only one that is crying and praying and saying, God, take us back to the old standard. Am I the only one going to get to heaven? I don't have money in my pocket. I don't have money in my wardrobe. There's no money anywhere. There's no other thing except just preaching this gospel to you. I do it in the day and in the night. Am I not a challenge to you? Why can't you follow my example? If Paul told those Corinthian Christians and said, follow me as I follow Christ, am I not following Christ, you know? If you can convince me of sin, come and tell me. If you feel that I am not doing the right thing and, you know, I'm just a heretic, a centric fellow that will not, uh, you know, go into all the things of this world. If that is what you think and that is why you cannot follow my example, come and tell me. Let me know if I'm going astray. How can somebody have children and those children cannot follow their father? Let's repent. And I believe you will repent. I know you love me. But you know I'm not... I think you love me, but I only think about it. But how can I be convinced? I have no other place. I've been rejected by everybody just because of you. Why it not because of you? I would not be driven away from where I was before. Oh, they love me in that place. I will tell you I was in the apostolic faith. Some of you young babies in deeper life may not know that. And I, in that church, oh, they all knew me. And the general overseer, 
He took me like his boy. But because of my conviction, I said, no, I cannot. If you change a little thing in that Bible, I cannot agree with you. And it's because of you. You know, I could. I could have remained there and, you know, got to heaven straight ahead because I will never commit sin. But because of you, that time you were still in the wilderness of sin. You didn't know what they call Christianity. You were still in the denominational wilderness. But I said, those people, this vision of deeper life that I've seen, uh, let, me, let me stand true to it. It's because I came out and I started standing. That's how you came. Why don't you show your gratitude and keep this standard? I hope we are going to keep this standard. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. All this time we'll be here together. Every message, you will be here. Don't, you know, stay in the hostel. Don't loiter around. Don't go up and down. And if you're sick, well, you know that God allows us to pray for the sick. And by the grace of God, they do get healed. And God's power will never fail. And every word of God is pure. And you will not add to the word of God. Keep to the word of God. You know, Jesus may come any time. And that's why we're making all this noise and all our leaders and preachers will be preaching here. That's why we'll all be emphasizing the word of God to you, to everyone. Let's hold on to the word of God. And don't diminish from the word. Don't add to the word. And by your life, let's lift the touch of the gospel high. So that when you go back, to a location where you came from, people will see you and they will know that you have been with Jesus. That is number one. They would also know that you have been with the general superintendent, the pastor of deeper life here that have had an effect and influence on your life. You take correction, won't you? I said you will take correction, won't you? You know, this could be a beautiful family. If we will take correction, repent, consecrate. All the idols of your life, you will get rid of. You make all the necessary confessions unto God. Make all the necessary restitution and consecrate your life to the Lord that this will be a life changing, life.